Hello again everyone, Mr. Cruz here with another Algebra 2 review for you. This time the continuation of the Semester 2 Final Exam Review, uh, Part 4. Alright, hopefully uh, we'll just chew through as many of these problems as we can. As always, email me, tweet me, post comments on this video if you have any questions at all. Alright, I want you to do well on this final and um, end the year off right, okay? So let's start with 33. Let's pick up where we left off. Simplify the complex fraction. Complex fraction just means fraction in a fraction, basically. So I deal with them part by part. So let's do the top first. 1 over xy minus 1 over y squared. Let's just treat that first, OK? Again, you need common denominators in order to subtract them. I notice this has an x, but this one does not. So I need to multiply by x over x. <clears throat> of course, it has to be the same on the top and bottom because uh, I don't want to change the problem. I'm basically multiplying by 1 in the form of x over x, okay? So this denominator would now be xy squared. This one's just xy, so I need another y over here, okay? Then you just multiply these things. You get y over xy squared minus x over xy squared. And now that they have common denominators, that just becomes y minus x over xy squared. So I'm going to go ahead and change the top part to that, okay? That's the top. Let's do the bottom now, okay? Uh, the bottom is 1 over x squared y <clears throat> minus 1 over xy squared. They're almost close. I think this one is missing a y, right? Because it needs to be y squared, but it's only y. This one's missing an x because it needs to be x squared, okay? So we get y over x squared y squared <clears throat> minus x over x squared y squared, which ends up equaling y minus x over x squared y squared. Okay, so uh, let me write that. y minus x over x squared y squared. So after all that work of getting common denominators, <clears throat> we basically now have a little more of a simpler fraction over a fraction. You should remember now how to divide fractions, right? You keep flip change, keep the first fraction, <clears throat> flip the second, or in this case the one on the bottom. So we're going to flip it and then change it to multiplication, okay? So I kept the first one, flipped the bottom one, and then changed it to multiplication. Well, looky here, guys. Y minus X is cancel. I see that the Y squareds cancel, and one of my X's is actually going to cancel. So the only thing left, this whole messy complex fraction, simplifies to X. <laughs> Technically, as long as x and y aren't 0, okay? 34, solve the equation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this over 1. Anyway, if I can get common denominators, then I can just look at the numerators of these fractions. Uh, so let's get common denominators. I'm going to, let's see, multiply this one by 3 over 3. Maybe I should erase this work here. I'm going to multiply this one by 2 over 2. That way, what are their common denominators? Well, 3 times 2x is 6x, 2 times 3x is 6x, which means I need to multiply this one by 6x as well. So that 1 times 6x is 6x. When you do that, you get, let's see, 9 over 6x minus 10 over 6x equals 12x over 6x. You can check it if you don't believe me. <clears throat> Make sure it reduces back to what you started with. But anyway, you notice, hopefully, that all their denominators are the same. Well, if their denominators are the same, I can kind of ignore those denominators and just make it a simpler problem. So negative 1 equals 12x. When you divide by 12, x ends up equaling negative 1 12th. Now, it says check, check each solution. Technically, the only thing you have to worry about is you have to make sure that whatever x comes out to be it's not in your restrictions. You remember how to do the restrictions in the last video, okay? Uh, the only restrictions here are zero. X cannot be zero, and that's not our answer, so we're good. 35. <clears throat> this one you can get common denominators if you want. I think it's easier to just cross multiply. You know how to do this. 1 times X minus 4. Uh, technically, you'd have to make sure you distribute. Equals X times 5. Distribute the 1. Seems rather pointless. X minus 4 equals 5X. I subtract x, we get negative 4 equals 4x, which means x equals negative 1. Now, again, we have to check it. Make sure that it's not in your restrictions anywhere. This would be x can't equal 0. This would be x can't equal 4. Our answer is neither one of those choices, so we are good. 
Oh, 36. These are fun. So you travel 10 miles on your bicycle in the same time it takes your friend. Let's underline same time because that's important. It takes your friend to travel 8 miles on his. If your friend rides his bicycle 2 miles per hour slower than you, find the rate at which each of you is traveling. You remember these? The rate times time equals distance problems? You had to make your little chart, right? Let's see, there's me and there's my friend. Okay. So I travel 10 miles on my bicycle. Is that a rate, a time, or a distance? 10 miles is a distance. Same time, it takes my friend to travel 8 miles on his. Okay. My friend rides his bicycle 2 miles per hour slower than I do. But do I know how fast I'm riding? The answer is no. That's a rate. I'm going to call it x. I don't know how fast I'm going. We're going to find that out. My friend goes 2 miles per hour slower, though, so it's going to be my speed minus 2, right? And then the question is, how do I get time? Well, if you look at the formula, rate times time equals distance, and you get time by itself by dividing by r, time actually equals d over r. So I can actually put 10 over x, and that equals 8 over x minus 2. But now, what do I do with this table? Well, <clears throat> you notice how it said the same time, right? Hugely important. That means these two, same time. They're equal to each other. So you say 10 over x equals 8 over x minus 2. And guys, look. This problem looks exactly like this problem now. Cross multiply. 10 times x minus 2 equals 8x. <clears throat> you can distribute the 10. 10x minus 20 equals 8x. Uh, subtract, you get negative 20 equals negative 2x, which means x equals 10 miles per hour. Okay, so there's my work for that. I'm going to erase it, though, just so we have a little room. x was my speed. So me, I'm going 10 miles per hour on my bicycle. My friend rides 2 miles per hour slower than me, so he's going to be going 8 miles per hour. Which, by the way, conveniently enough, means we only traveled for one hour, right? If that's how far we went. Okay. 37, determine whether the sequence is arithmetic. <clears throat> arithmetic means that you have to be adding the same amount or subtracting the same amount every time, right? How do I get from 10 to 20? Well, I'm adding 10. How do I about 20 to 30? I'm adding 10. 30 to 40? I'm adding 10, which means, yes, arithmetic. And then it says, if it is, identify the common difference. We call that D. Well, basically, it's whatever I'm adding every time, which is 10. Okay. Find the missing term of the arithmetic sequence. All right, uh, I'm not sure if you noticed back on this other one. Basically, if you have three consecutive numbers in an arithmetic sequence, if you average the two on the outside, basically if you add them up and divide by two, you get the middle number. 10 plus 30 is 40, divided by two is 20. 20 plus 40 is 60, divided by two is 30, okay? It always works. So basically, we're gonna find the arithmetic mean of 14 and 28. So you take 14 plus 28, and divide by 2. <clears throat> 14 plus 28 ends up being 42, and when you divide it by 2, you get 21. So that's what would go there, 21. And you can check it. They just added 7 each time, right? Find the missing term of the geometric sequence. Remember, you need, it should say you need plus or minus here. I'm not sure what happened to the plus or minus. <clears throat> I remember typing the plus or minus, but it went away for some reason. Anyway, geometric is a little different. Instead of adding and dividing by 2, you're going to multiply them and take the square root. Now, the only thing is, is you need plus or minus because we're not sure that number could be positive or it could be negative. Uh, so anyway, I multiply 9180 times 255, get an obnoxiously large number, square root of 2340900. You take the square root of that, oh, it comes out quite nice, plus or minus 1530, okay? Arithmetic, you add and divide by 2. <clears throat> Geometric, you multiply and take the square root. Okay. Identify the sequences. Arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Then find the next two terms. Okay. Well, uh, I think it's easier to check arithmetic first. So I'm adding 45 to get to 90. Then I have to add 90 to get to 180. So since I'm adding two different numbers, boom, not arithmetic. So uh, it could be neither. Let's see. Let's try geometric. What am I multiplying by to get to 90? That's times 2. How about 90 to 180? That's times 2 as well. 180 to 360 is times 2 as well. So it is definitely geometric. And then they want us to find the next two terms, right? Well, you can either use the formula or we can just go ahead and multiply by 2 again. So what is the next term? 360 times 2 is 720. 
720 times 2 would be 1440. You can certainly use the formula. Remember for geometric it's A1 times R to the N minus 1. So the formula for this one would be 45 times 2 to the N minus 1 power. And you could find the, what, fifth and sixth term that way, and it would be that as well. Okay? <clears throat> 41, write an explicit formula for the sequence. Oh, look, we, we just did that. It's geometric because I know it has R. R is the geometric one. D is the arithmetic one, right? So it's a n equals a1 r to the n minus 1. So let's get the formula first. 100 is a1. r is negative 20 to the n minus 1 power. There you go. Formula. Check. Then find the fifth term. So we're going to plug in 5 for n. We're going to find the fifth term. Uh, so basically we're going to take negative 20 to the fourth power. Make sure you put the negative in parentheses. And then multiply by 100. And I get, I did not leave myself in a firm. I'll move this over. You get uh, 3, 4, 5, 6. You get 16 million as the fifth term. Okay? Make sure you put the negative 20 in parentheses, otherwise, it won't take the negative to the fourth power. Okay? Sequence has eight terms. Evaluate the related series 5, 13, 21, 61. Clearly arithmetic. We're adding 8 every time, right? Well, arithmetic sequence... Oh, sorry, this is series. Arithmetic series is n over 2 times the first term plus the last term, okay? So these might be some important formulas to have on your note card. 8 terms, so that's n. So I plug in 8 for n. The first number in the series is 5. The last number is 61. So then it's just a matter of 4 times 66, which is 264. That would be the total if you actually added them all up, okay? 43, I think we can keep going here. 43, in a 20-row theater, 20 is going to be n, clearly. That's how many rows we have. The number of seats in a row increases by 3 with each successive row. That's D. First row is 18 seats. That's A1. Find the total number of seats in the theater. The only thing we're missing for our series formula is we are missing the last term. We need to know how many are in that 20th row. We need to know how many seats are in that 20th row. So we have to use the arithmetic sequence, which is this formula. The first term plus your common difference times n minus 1. And we need to find the 20th term. I know there are 18 seats in the first row. Every row increases by 3. So let's see. It'll be whatever 18 plus 3 times 19 is. So I do 3 times 19, I add 18 to it, you get 75. So that means there are 75 seats in the last row. Well, here we go. Let's find the sum. First row has 18, 75 in the 20th row. So it'll be 10 times 93. So it'll be 930 seats. Okay, that's probably the trickiest part of the arithmetic series problems, is you sometimes have to find that last term. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and stop this video here. Uh, we've uh, accomplished quite a bit in this video. Again, email me, tweet me, come in for extra help. I want you to do well on this final exam, all right? That's the point of these videos, and I think they've really helped. Um, so continue to subscribe and things like that, all right? Good luck studying, and I'll see you later.